started our started the MPH program at GW, I believe, in the fall of 2005. So it took about time to get her tenure. Um, so it's a good thing that she's about to finish. Um, along the way, she earned a graduate certificate, an add-on certificate in public health at the University And now she's about to complete her MPH in uh, environmental and occupational health. For about the last four or five years, Francine has um, been living in New York, where she works as a program coordinator for what I will put in finger quotes as a large Northeastern um, hospital system. And we'll hear a little bit more about um, that as she gives her talk. Um, she is a research coordinator of a number of different research programs. And I'm pleased that she's here today to talk about um, uh, so more the topic of occupational injury and in specific um, violence and health care workers. So Francine, take it away. Thank you, Dr. Hunter. I'm Francine. Um, today I'm going to talk about violence among health care workers. One of the most common sources for occupational injury among health care workers is violence. The Bureau of Labor Statistics excuse me, reports reported in 2011 incident rates of injuries and they classify their health care workers into three different groups, private industry, state, and local government health and social assistance employees. In 2011, 14.6 for every 10,000 workers in private industry were involved in violent injuries in the workplace, 132.9 for state and 17.5 for local health and social assistance employees. Many studies have suggested in the past, though, um, under-reporting specifically on gender, who the perpetrator was. Was it a coworker? Was it um, a family member or a friend? The frequency of violent incidents among healthcare workers. Also, did the healthcare worker experience more symptoms than were actually reported? Did the incident involve physical or non-physical violence? Did the healthcare worker ask the perpetrator to stop or try to intervene? Did the healthcare worker receive encouragement from colleagues to report the incident? And did the violent incident occur in a hospital environment or a non-hospital environment? <coughs> Previous research has identified that psychiatric facilities, emergency departments, and nursing homes are the most common departments in the healthcare field to have employees experiencing workplace violence. However, among healthcare workers, the <coughs> occupation identified as the most common recipient of violence is nurses. Other risk factors for violence toward healthcare workers includes lack of funding for staff in the hospitals, lack of supervisor support, inappropriate staff duties, employees' perception of their work environment, working with patients who are hospitalized involuntarily, the amount of patient contact with the healthcare worker, and the number of hours the healthcare worker is in the, at work. A number of violence prevention strategies have been suggested by researchers to reduce the number of injuries to healthcare workers. Workers' compensation claims are often a primary source of data for of surveillance data for occupational injury, and that's what was used in this study. And there's many limitations to using workers' compensation claims data, as I learned. Um, they're listed on this slide, but a couple I wanted to highlight are underreporting, um, which varies from one industry to another. Um, but it can convolute results when making comparisons, when you're trying to make comparisons from one industry to the next. There's often incomplete reporting of information, which can lead to underestimation of risk and skewed conclusions regarding health outcomes. There's limited diagnostic expo and exposure information um, collected on workers' comp claims, and that makes accurate reporting difficult. And also, cases of low severity are often missed and not reported as a workers' comp claim. However, a strength of using the workers' comp claims as a source of data is that it can detect high-risk occupations um, among a population. So the study population was a large healthcare system in the northeastern United States, Dr. Hunting said. This health system is the third largest nonprofit tertiary healthcare system in the country, and it is comprised of 16 hospitals and approximately 48,000 employees. It includes tertiary and community hospitals, a children's hospital, a psychiatric hospital, over 400 ambulatory physician practices, and also home care and hospice facilities. The 
Health Systems Security Management Plan defines workplace violence as any assault, harassment, threatening behavior, verbal abuse, or intimidation of an employee occurring in the workforce, not just physical violence. Many cases, in many cases by the time situations are identified as violent, it's often too late and the patient has already committed the act. This study hoped to bring to light valuable information um, about this particular population um, regarding patient violence and employee injury using a resource that the institution has never used before. So my specific aims were to perform a keyword search of the workers' comp claims data, to identify injuries involving violence toward healthcare workers, then to conduct a descriptive analysis of the findings of the qualitative analysis from AIM-1, to identify groups at high risk of experiencing violence in the workplace and conduct a relative risk analysis, also to de determine whether the rate of violent injuries varies by department, occupation, or shift, and four, to identify potential measures that hospital administrators and managers might use to prevent violence-related injuries in the future. So AIM-1 was from a keyword search. Workers' compensation claims for seven years, 2003 to 2009, were analyzed. Claims still open or no cost reimbursed were excluded from the study. No cost reimbursed means claims that the employee has not yet been reimbursed for their medical expenses. During the seven-year period, a total of 47,969 people were employed for at least one day by the health system. And also during that period, 3,452 workers, accepted workers' comp cases with medical costs reimbursed were submitted in the health system, and that's what was used for analysis. Data on all the workers' comp claims was ex were exported in a de-identified format from the Department of Risk Management um, in a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, so the IRB found this study to be exempt. There were many variables from the workers' comp database to choose from, but I focused on some brief demographics um, listed here. Occupation, department, shift, employment status, union membership, and a narrative free text description of the accident. <coughs> so since there was no available or variable in the workers' comp database, specifically asking about violence, um, the narrative description of accident field was the best source of information on injuries involving violence. It contained net narrative free text but had a limit of only 40 characters. Once the keyword search was complete, each result was examined to determine if separating these cases by keyword actually helped identify cases involving violence. The 48 keywords listed on this table um, were searched in the narrative description of accident field. And this list was created by using um, keywords from literature of literature review about violence toward healthcare workers from the Health System Security Management Plan's definition of workplace violence and from my own thoughts about what keywords would determine if there was a violent injury. Um, due to the narrative, the nature of the database where the workers' comp information is stored, identifying the keyword alone turned out to be insufficient to determine if the injury was from violence. For instance, the keyword kick is up here. Um, but it might have said the employee kicked a cart he was pushing, not that he was kicked by a patient. Um, additionally, if it said hit by, but it did not say hit by a patient, the assumption was made that this was not caused by violence, since there was no clear way to identify um, the fact that it was a violent injury. Duplicate results were also sometimes identified by the keyword search, such as attacked by combative patient had three keywords, but was only counted once. Um, a frequency distribution was used to describe the cases identified by the keyword search. Variables that were used in the frequency distribution include occupation, department, gender, union membership, and age. Because the description of injury field was truncated, it was not always clearly stated that the violent injury was caused by a patient, coworker, guest, etc. For those cases, it was assumed that the violent injury was caused by a patient. For AIM-3, I identified groups at high risk of experienced workplace violence. Prevalence ratios were used to estimate the relative risk of violence from patients in this population. Seven-year rates, prevalence, 
prevalence ratios for subgroups such as department, occupation, shift, and age were calculated and compared to identify the group with highest risk of violence. Confidence intervals were calculated using the Poisson distribution, and explanatory variables were adjusted for all other variables using a robust variance Poisson regression for binary outcomes. For example, when occupation was the explanatory variable, the model was adjusted for department, years of, year, years of age, gender, union membership shifts, employment status. So of the 3,452 workers' comp cases that were accepted and had medical costs reimbursed, 173, or 5%, involved violence. Seven year, that makes the seven year prevalence to be 0 0.4. 167 cases involved violence from patients, it was explicitly stated. Six cases involve violence from other persons. For overall counts of number of cases, the highest occupation was nurses, the highest department was in the inpatient department. Age group, um, 30 to 39 year olds and 40 to 49 year olds were similar, 73 and 74 cases. Gender, uh, females had twice as many as males, 120 to 53, but this is just the count and in the health system, females outnumber males three to one, keep in mind. Um, union affiliation was very similar, 87 to 83, and day shift was much higher with, or had 94 cases and full time had 135. So when adjusting for all other risk factors, it was found that being an employee in the mental health department and an employee of an older age are two independent risk factors for violence from patients. Confidence intervals shown here represent statistically significant prevalence ratios. Adjusting for other risk factors, injury risk factors, violence was identified as 5.9 times more prevalent among the mental health department than the inpatient department. Violence cases were 3.5 times more prevalent among healthcare workers who were over the age of 60. And there was a trend of increasing violence of employees who were union versus non union, or ver for employees who were union and um, who worked the evening shift. When compared to non union workers, it was found that violence was 1.5 times more prevalent among employees who are union members. And similarly, violence was found to be 1.6 times more prevalent among the evening shift versus the day shift workers. I also conducted a sub-analysis um, of prevalence of violence by occupation within the mental health department and found that injury from violence was experienced by 5.6% of the nursing, nursing aides and assistants during the seven year period, followed by nurses and then mental health professionals, which you can see here. 82% um, of these claims also reported that the injury occurred while handling a patient, although details on um, specific patient handling procedures that were occurring when the incident occurred were not available from the database, or from the output from the database. It was also found that workers 50 years old or older had significantly elevated rates of violence. Prevalence of violence from patients was also assessed to determine risk of violence by age and stratified by occupation. This was to identify whether certain occupations and age groups were at greater risk, and the results are seen here. Among the occupations with at least, um, at least five violence cases reported in each cell, nurses 50 or older had 2.5 times more injury from patient violence than those younger than 50. Nurses and nursing aides and assistants, again, were more likely to be injured by patient violence if they were 50 or older. And this illustrates a possible um, effect modification by age. Um, I found it interesting that mental health professionals both under and over the age of 50 reported being approximately the same, had approximately the same prevalence, um, 2.5 and 2.7. And although the difference in prevalence by age um, for non-healthcare workers the bottom, um, was higher, that um, group, the grouping of prof healthcare professionals um, involved many different cate uh, categories, so specific detail regarding occupations was not really available. Um, 
as I stated before, there are a number of limitations when using workers' comp data for surveillance. The computer program that housed the data um, and the narrative description of accident field um, relied on employee data entry from the Department of Risk Management. And employees may have possibly had different definitions of violence. They may not have included non-physical violence. And as a result, um, a lot of cases might not have been described as violent when in fact it was. Um, additionally, as I mentioned, the data when it was exported was truncated, so there was no way to there was no way to correct for that. And this all is a reason that underestimating happens often when using workers' comp data. Um, the de-identified data set that came from risk management had in information on employee injury, occupation, department, um, but the demographics had to come from another department, it came from HR, and the variables, not all variables matched exactly. Um, and since everything was de-identified, there was no way to track one patient over time, or employee. Um, another limitation was that in such a large workforce um, over, a large fluid workforce over a seven year period, it was hard to determine a denominator. Um, we were, I was limited by the fact that um, it took a while for the for HR to report back to us with specific denominators. If I wanted to get more specific than over a seven year period, it takes six to eight weeks for them to um, get that back to me. So once I determined that um, mental health employees and um, folks in the department had a higher risk, it was um, not timely to get more denominators to um, further investigate um, risk of violence. So there were some strengths, <laughs> although I feel like the limitations outnumbered the strengths by hundreds. Um, <laughs> the descriptive analysis and rate-based findings um, helped to identify employees who otherwise would have been overlooked as um, recipients of patient violence. The rate-based analysis provides the opportunity, providing me the opportunity to identify employee subgroups at highest risk. Um, data on accidents that were reported to risk management um, and became workers' comp claims are likely to have been more severe, therefore collected in a short time period of the accident, which would hopefully eliminate any recall bias because while the data were collected retrospectively, it was without a great deal of time passing between the time of accident and the time of reporting for most of the injuries. Um, so in four potential measures that hospital administrators could use to prevent violence-related injuries. Employee, since employees in the mental health department and mental health professionals were found to have the highest risks, of experiencing workplace violence. Um, recommendation would be to start there in such a large institution. Implementation of a training program on nonviolent crisis intervention to this department, um, since they had the highest prevalence of violence, would be helpful to maybe mitigate future situations. Other researchers have recommended um, training that prepares mental health employees for the difficult conditions of their field and retraining. This training should also help employees identify aversive behaviors and develop skills to handle them. Um, they should also include guidelines for mental health professionals to deal with patients who are abusive, manipulative, or dishonest. Learning how to be assertive without being aggressive to this patient population could help reduce the number of accounts of patient violence. And post-incident support is recommended for employees uh, in many cases where workplace violence is an issue. OSHA has also established guidelines to prevent workplace violence and recommends not only a training program, but, but also for employers to track the progress in reducing violent incidents. Um, after reviewing what the violence training and intervention programs are in the health system, um, if any, to, for these employees, I would recommend um, starting with these OSHA guidelines um, to, to develop a, a violence intervention program. Um, Follow-up studies, including a survey to those occupations and employees identified with the highest prevalence of violence, and or to all healthcare workers, um, are definitely needed to expand knowledge of violence among this workforce. 
The survey should definitely include questions such as years of work experience due to the protective factor that awful, often is um, associated with um, more experience. Future surveys should also ask, do you have direct patient contact? Um, as those, especially for those individuals who are at high risk. Also, um, who is the perpetrator of the incident and not just have a free check space to have um, a selection of drop down options, um, perhaps another also. And knowing these specific details about the incident will help managers and directors identify specific areas to target interventions on violence. On violence. And, and I just want to thank Dr. Hunting um, for all of his support. And um, couldn't have done it without you. Um, Dr. Hyun Kim was my on site preceptor. Um, Dr. Moline is the chair of the department I work in. And Dr. Drop in. Um, Moral support. So, thank you very much to everyone. Let's open the floor for questions, and maybe um, maybe somebody there could um, consult with the questions. I can't see the audio. Oh. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Um, I think union members are made more aware by union leadership um, how to report injuries. Um, they have union me meetings, they have, I feel like they have more uh, more information in general on how to report and be compensated for, for injuries like that. And that's just from what I've seen. Yeah. So this was done just for workers' comp. So was it the report or if they actually These were medical. accepted cases and they did receive a reimbursement for medical expenses and um, if they lost work days they were compensated. Okay, and in that, how different do you think your results would have been just whatever you think mm -hmm. um, if you could have looked at the, re the report and not just what was accepted? Um, there would have been more information. Um, I would have it would have been more difficult to get access to that, but in a perfect world, if I had access to it, um, the narrative description, I would have been able to see everything that was written. And to do that, I would have had to have access to a database that I didn't have access to. I only had the export. Um, I think I would have gotten more information on what the actual problem was. Um, I, I sat with some of the ladies in risk management. There were a couple men. Um, you know, and kind of listened to, as an outside person on their phone call and um, you know it was interesting how people wrote things differently and different abbreviations and um, misspellings um, that was one of the reasons I had to go through everything individually because even with the keywords like assault might be spelled wrong um, so it would have taken more time but it would have definitely given more given Do you think more there was <coughs> I think that there would have been um, more cases identified Hi, Frenzy. Great Hi. job. Um, good to see you up there. <laughs> um, I was curious, upon with your criteria of um, verbal abuse, oh, unfortunately I've had a recent experience with my, my father when, mm -hmm. when a patient is um, uh, coming through uh, with narcotics and uh, they're, they're very stressed. Mm -hmm. um, there's a great deal of agitation. So I was curious if you knew how much is due, because I got to imagine nurses are abused by that definition right. quite often, mm -hmm. um, based on patients. Just they 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 would do things they normally wouldn't do in regular sure. life. You know, they're mm -hmm. they're very stressed. Yeah. So, how much of the workman comp would you see as being derived by patients? Or I, I know that your data was difficult to, to determine that, mm -hmm. but do you have a sense for that? How much might be from say coworkers versus patients that are that are aggressive? Uh, yes. Um, when I when I searched everything the, the cases individually, um, it, it there were 67 cases that said patient specific or 167 that specifically said patient, um, less than 10 that said coworker um, or guest. 
Um, so I so do this feel like predominantly from patients. it's predominantly from patients, yeah. And also, um, you know, they they might have often been handling the patient in some way. Um, and if the patient was agitated, maybe you should have touched them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I mean, that could be like lack of training or lack of retraining. I mean, I feel like everyone needs retraining, you know, refreshers. So while it's identified as the patient, I don't know that that was actually the source because it's it's not explicit enough. For it. So I don't know that that is. Yes. So I had a, a, f a friend that drove an ambulance for this crisis mm -hmm. hospital, and, and it seemed like he was getting yelled at and verbally sure. abused every time he went out. Yeah. Um, so how does that fit into this spectrum? You know? Yeah, I feel like um, from what the research I've done and um, I've done some other projects with EMTs and paramedics and they kind of feel like it's part of the job. This is my job. I help the person get from here to there. They're safe. Maybe I got screamed at or smacked. Oh, I'm, I can keep working. It's not that bad. Um, same for nurses. So, um, yeah, I feel like the, it's, it's, a, it's a mindset. It's a culture that they kind of feel like. And then when they're in the unions, I feel like sometimes from being at union meetings, they're saying, no, that's not okay. You should report that. But though they're not all union members, and especially if you're among EMT and paramedics, sometimes they're volunteers or part-time per diem, and they don't have as much um, support from maybe the department, because they're not there as much. Let me follow up on that, because yeah, yep. <coughs> your definition of, of uh, workplace violence included verbal assault, mm -hmm. like, but when you use data from work that's calm, Right. Presumably, you're missing a, a mm -hmm. potentially a significant fraction. Can you imagine that that would somehow change your view of the results? I mean, could it be that there are different groups who are more prone to sure. one kind of violence or another, or different settings that are mm -hmm. uh, that you just miss because work is comparable and data got to go? Yeah, I think a lot of people don't know that if you are verbally assaulted by someone, you can report that as a workers' comp case. Oh. Um, I, I mean, I didn't know that until I read the definition. Um, I'm sure somewhere in my history I could put that down as being being verbally assaulted. Um, but I didn't file for workers' comp. Um, I didn't feel any emotional, lasting emotional distress. Didn't have any time off of work. Um, so, um, I'm sorry, that was your first question. No, no, no. I, no, I don't, no, I don't no, know no, if I'm actually answering No, I question. actually assumed that some of these things in the category mm -hmm would not have been covered by workman's comp, but you're saying they were perfectly yeah. eligible because mm -hmm. that's the definition, they could have been covered. It's it's the um, okay. health system's definition and it's also covered by New York State Workers' Comp. New York State Workers' Comp. Okay. And New York State. So <laughs> can I add can I add something Yeah. Um, I don't know where if I should look here. <laughs> <laughs> I think we also have to think about ultimately yes it could be reported as a case, but for workers comp Cover is medical expenses. So right. if somebody needs counseling because they were verbally abused um, or other medical health care treatment, that would be covered mm -hmm. uh, under workers' comp medical. Or if somebody was so um, kind of traumatized that they had to lose work, that's the other side of workers' comp reimbursement is is um, lost wages. And so those are the two situations where a workers' comp case will be successful, where there's um, a certain amount of time, a certain threshold of time loss of work, or whether there's um, medical care that's needed, medical yeah. cost. 